Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we are so excited because we love NZXT, but man, you get a lot of complaints about the H510 and that flat panel in the front. They've changed the game today. Today we have the H510 Flow, which is literally the H510 with holes in the front. It fixes all the problems, but is it actually any good? Well, we're gonna build a PC and find out. But before we do that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Antec and their NX200M Micro ATX Gaming Case. This case is perfect for your next budget gaming PC build out there with a full mesh front panel for great airflow, an included 120mm exhaust fan and support for up to a 240mm liquid cooler in the front and mounting for two more fans on the top, making this a very budget friendly airflow king. This case even comes with a full timber glass side panel using a magnetic hinge system, which is a feature we love here at the Toasty Bros. Consider picking up this awesome budget case today and deck it out with some budget RGB fans like we will in a future PC build by using the link in the description down below. Special thanks again to Antec for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the video, shall we? So we're really excited because, well, we like the H510 a lot. We've always been pretty partial to it, but it gets a lot of complaints about airflow and we're actually pretty excited because we're gonna throw in some extra fans into this. And really, this is everything you know and love about the H510. It just is a little better because they put holes in the front essentially. And it actually comes in at around the exact same price. So I really don't know what that means for the original H510, but the H510 flow, you know what? You got airflow, you gotta love it. Let's go ahead and talk about each individual part and how it makes up this PC build. So we actually went to Best Buy and just did in-store pickup for all this stuff because, well, this H510 was showing up very quickly on short notice and we really wanted to get a video before it came out so that we could get some content out to you guys. So we went to Best Buy and picked up this Ryzen 5 5600X. We absolutely love this processor because in all honesty, it really is one of the best ones you can get in terms of gaming. Six core, 12 thread, very, very strong individual cores. It's known as being like the best for gaming, so we got it. And for the cooler, this is really one of the first times we've done this. This is the NZXT Kraken 120. It's really a basic 120 mil AIO, but obviously it's NZXT, so it's a little bit higher end. We just never go 120s because for the most part, we've always thought, well, it's either 240 or we go air tower cooler. We're finally meeting in the middle and doing the 120. It's definitely going to be better than the stock cooler. How much better? I don't really know. I know there's some really great videos by Linus Tech Tips and Gamers Nexus where they've tested 120s. They both aren't the biggest fans of them, but I think NZXT XT is going to deliver with this one. For the motherboard, we just had to go full size because, well, we wanted to take up the whole inside of this case. We have the MSI Mag B550 Gaming Plus B550, which is a absolutely amazing motherboard. We've used them many times. They are third gen ready out of the box. It should be fourth gen ready, although it doesn't even say it. So I'm gonna really pray we don't have to do a BIOS flash, but it's B550, so it's the most up to date. One step below the X570. It can still do overclock and still do RAM overclocking. So it has everything that we want. Now for RAM, we kind of went in the middle of budget and expensive. We got two 8 gig 6, 16 total of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro, and it is 3200 megahertz. Of course, you could spend a little bit less and maybe get 3600 megahertz if you don't go RGB, but what would this build be without some RGB in it? We're gonna add some RGB fans too. We have this nice NZXT core that we can customize the logo to make it RGB. Um, and I, we probably have some other RGB stuff somewhere I'm missing, but RGB. RGB, long story short. So we had to get some for the RAM. So we have a Western Digital Black NVMe M.2 SSD. This is considered to be like Western Digital's high-end gaming NVMe SSD. It's obviously not Gen 4, it's right below Gen 4 because it does have some really, really fast NVMe read and write speeds. But this is a really good option, especially if you go with like um, Intel platform and you just can't get Gen 4 because you don't have the right support for it. Or if you happen to have a motherboard that doesn't support Gen 4, you can at least get this and still have very, very close speeds. Now for the graphics card, we have the good old EVGA GeForce GTX 1660. Now, obviously with the 5600X, you could get a better graphics card, but because of the current climate and the fact we wanna get this video out soon, we actually used our good old friends PC Bros, our PC selling business, to pick this thing up and use it for this PC build. So buy PC from us, support us at PC Bros. But 1660 is still a great card, has, a, has that awesome NVENC encoder so you can get into live streaming. And as you'll see in the benchmarks, it's gonna be a great performer in most games nowadays. Now for the power supply, we have the good old Corsair CX M series. Uh, this is a 750 watt power supply, and I'll be honest with you, this is heavy. Like this has some heft to it. Um, this is a pretty high quality power supply. It is semi-modular, has black cables, and honestly, we haven't used this one. This looks like a relatively new power supply from Corsair, so we're excited to see how it works and give us plenty of headroom to upgrade to a better graphics card in the future. And of course, last but certainly not least, the good old H510 Flow, which I'm going to just go ahead and open, because you know what, why the heck not? I'm gonna speed open this. 
this. Uh, but this uh, H510 is just like all the other H510s, minus the fact that it has holes. What if we open this up and it's not the H510 flow? <laughs> what if they're just pranking us? Oh, I see the grill. I see it. You see it? You I see, see holes? It. I see holes. All right, we're going to go here. Am I, am I going to get stuck? So uh, here we go. Can't see the holes. Now we don't even know if they made any other change, right? We're just assuming it's only From holes. what I've seen from our reviewer's guide, everything's the same. It has the 120 uh, mount on top, 120 in the back, two fans up front, and once I get this off, you'll see the cheese grater design. So uh, yeah, it's literally just like it. It looks clean though. I like this approach because I like the minimal look of NZXT cases. That's why a lot of people go with them. Um, so when everyone's like, uh, make it airflow, sometimes it doesn't look that good, but this actually looks pretty good. Um, it keeps the minimal design. It has airflow. It looks like you have one fan pre-installed in the front one uh, in the back. and one in the back. Um, obviously we're probably gonna put two here and then the 120 will be right here and then we'll maybe move this fan up here or whatever we'll do with RGB. As long as you have a three fan RGB pack, we'll be good to go um but yeah excited it actually has mesh oh my goodness how's it gonna perform i don't know let's just build a pc in it and see how she does Right, guys now that we have this h510 flow gaming pc all booted up and ready to go let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick we decided to test this pc in a couple of titles those being apex legends borderlands 3 splitgate and call of duty cold war first up in apex legends on max settings at 1080p we averaged about 90 plus fps now two things here one most people aren't playing apex on max settings there are optimized settings where you could pretty much easily get 144 fps constant with this configuration and two the 16 is definitely not the best GPU compared with the 5600X. Again, as we mentioned in the beginning of this video, we wanted to get this video out pretty quickly and we were on a short turnaround time, so the 1660 was the one card we had on hand to make this PC. So, do take these benchmarks with a grain of salt. I would really recommend something like a 1660 Ti at the minimum for something like a 5600X, a slightly better GPU, um, or something like a 3060, which would make a lot more sense with the 5600X. But, as you can see, the temperature stayed pretty solid, getting about 60 degrees Celsius on the GPU and CPU at most. Next up in Borderlands 3, which is a game that really stresses that GTX 1660, we averaged about 60 FPS at 1080p on high settings. Once again, this is a AAA benchmark that is really demanding, and getting 60 FPS at 1080p in this game is still pretty good. This PC would work perfectly fine for all the AAA titles out there on high settings at 1080p, but you may want to lower some settings a little bit if you want to get above 60 FPS with that 1660. Next up in one of our favorite esports titles right now, Splitgate, at 1080p on max settings, we averaged 244 plus FPS. Um, really, if you wanted to play on a 240Hz monitor, you could and have a good gaming experience, but I wouldn't really recommend doing that with the 1660 and 5600X. Splitgate is a game that's really fun to play, and I know a lot of you have probably seen it already, but if you're wondering if this PC will run games like Fortnite or Rainbow Six Siege or all those other esports titles, no problems whatsoever, easily over 
144 FPS on pretty much whatever pro settings you want for whatever game you're gonna play. So a 1080p high refresh rate monitor wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for this PC build if you're looking to do that. And last but certainly not least, Call of Duty Cold War on medium high settings at 1080p, we averaged about 80 FPS. In recap, this PC performs pretty well. It's a 1660 and Ryzen 5 5600X. You definitely can go with a better GPU in a build like this, but the main purpose of this build was to showcase the H510 flow, which we really like. It's the H510, but with holes in the front. There's really no big difference between um, the H510 and the H510 flow besides the airflow, which is a much needed improvement that a lot of people have been harping in ZXT on forever. And it's very cool to see that they are actually listening to people who really want to see an airflow version. And I have a feeling this is going to be one of the most popular cases for 2021 going into 2022. So if you want to pick up any parts of today's video, the link in the description down below will be affiliate links and will help us out. Now, I do believe the H510 Flow is being announced today, but it's not actually going to be released until October. So hold on tight for that one and stay tuned to actually be able to pick this thing up. We'll probably drop some links to uh, where places where you can buy it um, in the description down below. So you happen to be watching later in the year or 2022, those links will work. So do keep that in mind. How about I bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this PC, and not only did it run super cool, but it also ran all of our games really well. Of course, the pairing with the 1660 and 5600X is, well, a good combo, but you could certainly go with a better GP if you wanted to. But for the most part, this is a really awesome build, and we were very impressed, of course, with the H510 Flow. We love NZXT and the cases that they offer, and the fact that they have an Airflow version now just makes us recommend them more. So if you want to pick up this case, link in the description down below, along with all the other parts in today's video, they will be affiliates, and they will help us out. Out. I do believe this case has a little bit of a later availability from the time we're releasing this video. Like I think in October is when it actually comes out. So be a little patient with that, but we are very excited with this. And if you do wait, I would highly recommend this for your next gaming PC. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And hey, we have those other YouTube channels and we got that Twitch. We also have lots of social media to choose from, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter to Discord to TikTok. TikTok. That's one. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun social media platforms. If you can't get enough of the Toasty Bros, definitely go there. See you guys later. Goodbye. TikTok. I always forget that one. TikTok.